The new remove tool in Photoshop is a relatively simple tool to use that doesn't seem like it has a whole lot of control to use it. But I'm gonna teach you some best practices here on this image that I find are very helpful for me in my workflow. Now this is a waterfall that I shot in the Columbia River Gorge and you can see that there's a lot of spray all over this. And I thought that pff, this thing is gone and lost forever. There is no way that I'm gonna be able to resurrect this but then the remove tool. So what we're gonna do here is first off, we gotta make sure we have the remove tool in here. I've gotten so many emails and comments from people asking me, where is the remove tool? I'm in Photoshop 24 point whatever, and I can't find it. Well, that might be because you have your own custom workspace. I have my own custom workspace, which is my Blake Rudis 2023 workspace up here. So if Photoshop updated, and that was my current workspace that transferred over to a new version of Photoshop, my tools, if I have that set in that workspace, will not be updated for the newest version and the newest tools that come out. So if that's you, you can right click on your toolbar here and say edit toolbar. And then on the right hand side, you'll see all the tools that you do not have over here on the left hand side. And you'll see that any tool that is in a group has a little drop down arrow here. I like to take the remove tool and put it in the same group as all of my other healing tools that you'll see like the spot healing brush, the healing brush, the patch tool, etc. So I'm going to take the removal tool and I'm going to put it right here. Okay. And then once I press done, you'll see it, it's over here in that section there. So if I click on another tool, that other tool is going to take precedence by click and hold because they're all in the same group and I can do that and have it right there as their move tool. Now, if you don't want it in the same group, what you could do there when you edit your toolbar here, I could come down to this uh, spot right here and just pull it out and put it right above. Now it's going to be above all of my other healing tools and it's going to have its own space. If it's a tool that you know you're going to use often, I actually would recommend that. Okay, so now let's talk about the tool itself. Now looking at the tool itself, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot here to control. I'm gonna turn all the buttons off here and I'm gonna talk about each one of these buttons as I talk about this tool and the best practices for using it. The size, this is the size of the brush, but it's not really a brush because we only get basically 5,000 and zero and there's no uh, feathering for that or hardness for that. You'll notice that if you actually use a brush and then right click, there's another setting here called hardness, which is a feathering along the edge. The remove tool does not have that. Do they plan on putting that in there at some point? I don't know. It might be nice because it would help blend things a little bit better on the outside. But if the remove tool does what the remove tool is supposed to do, as it's suggested, we probably shouldn't need it in the first place. Okay. So that's, that's first thing. The second thing is this button right here, which is actually a always use pressure for size. So I'm going to zoom in here and, and show you this. So if I'm using a mouse, all I can do is click and hold, and it's not going to change the brush size at all. But if I'm using a pen and tablet like this one, I use the XP pen star G 640. I've been using this one for like three years, three years ago, I did a YouTube tutorial on this and I freaking love it. But with this pen, it is set to pressure sensitivity. So as I draw on here, depending on how hard I push, I'm not pushing very hard right now. It's a very small uh, line. If I push very delicately, it's very tiny. Okay, I'm just gonna go right around the edge of this uh, in this spot right here. But if I push really hard, it's gonna fill in the whole area. Now I'll press enter and it will fill in those spaces. I tend to like to use the brush for this, especially when I'm doing very intricate things. You know, when I'm looking at this image in particular, you can see here, I'll paint on this area right along these edges here, press enter. Sometimes it will be more beneficial for me to paint along the edge of the, the, uh, the, the spray here. Those little bits of water that end up on the lens uh, end up catching a reflection. So sometimes I can just draw around that reflection and it'll fill in pretty well. And other times I might need to use the entire spot in order to get that to fill in. Now, one thing that can be kind of a pain is pressing enter after every single time you are going to use this brush. So instead you can click on this item right here that says remove after each stroke. And what that means is that when I click and drag around on here, as soon as I release that pressure sensitivity from my pen, it's automatically going to fill in those areas. I tend to like to work this way because I've noticed that if I fill in a lot of these spaces and then press enter at the end, it could take Photoshop quite a bit of time to fill in all the things that it needs to fill in. Now, one of the big questions that I get all the time is, can we use this tool on its own layer? And the answer is absolutely you can use this tool on its own layer. But if you just put a new layer here and you start drawing on here, you're going to get this can't use this tool because the image is transparent. 
and that's like, ah, oh, man, well, I guess I got to draw in the background. No, you don't. There's this item right here. This item is sample content from all visible layers. A visible layer is any layer that has this eyeball on. If the eyeball is off, it is no longer visible. If the eyeball is on, it is visible. So now if we paint and we draw on this, it's not going to give us that error message that something is transparent. Okay. Now knowing best practices about this tool is important. I just used the remove tool and it filled in that little crack right there. And I don't like that. So this is what I'm going to do. I need to get more intricate. I'm going to zoom in here make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to use my brush with the pressure sensitivity here to only draw on that reflected area because I don't want that crack to get filled in. You know, I think a lot of times people just say, well, I can use the remove tool and they just click and they start painting all over the place and they don't realize that they could be losing very important details in their image. You also have to know your limitations when it comes to this tool because of that. Okay. Sometimes it's not always the best practice to use the remove tool. Sometimes you still need to use things like the clone stamp tool and other methods like that. There is one really important thing I want to talk about when we are working on this on its own layer though. And that is that it's going to be doing it from all the visible layers. So let's say I click on this and I call this cleanup. Okay. That's, that's me knowing that this is my layer for all the things that are going to be happening for the cleanup, but I'm, I'm doing my work and I'm saying, okay, I'm, I'm good to go. I can move on now. Let me go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer here for some added contrast. Now, this is not going to look the best. I'm just kind of spitballing things here to get this rolling a little bit. And now I'm going to color grade this. So I'm going to just put a solid color fill on here. And I want it to be kind of this uh, kind of feel like a um, like a, a colder image. So I'm going to put a solid color fill on there, make this feel colder and just call that good. I don't, I'm not 100% sold on this color grade, but I do have to show you that if I go down here to this cleanup now and I start trying to clean things up now with the remove tool, uh, let's say I go in here and I grab this area and I clean this up. Okay. It's very important to note that anything that is in a visible layer is now going to be in that cleanup section. So watch this. I turn these layers off and guess what? We see that there's this like blue splotchiness here. What is going on? Well, guess what? Because these were considered visible layers, it put that information in with the cleanup work. Okay. So let me go ahead and go into my history and I'll go back here. The best practice for this then is to turn off all the visible layers that are above that cleanup section and then start doing it. Now you can do your cleanup on as many layers as you like. I like to do my cleanup stuff on the first layer above my background and just that's it. That's where I keep it. Okay. Uh, because if you do it too many times in your workflow and you have all these different cleanup layers, it's going to be a nightmare because now I'm good to go. I can actually turn these layers back on and I don't have uh, any, any issues with that. So knowing where you're using that in your workflows, critically important. Now I can go over this entire image pretty well here and it's going to do a pretty decent job of filling in these areas. So even here on the waterfall, you know, most people tend to pick easy images to demonstrate this tool or many tools in Photoshop. I'm not picking an easy image. This is actually a relatively difficult uh, image as far as all the different details that we have in here. And the remove tool is still doing a wonderful job of filling that data in, man, it looks good looks good. But notice that I'm not doing full splotches. I'm not doing like full hits. Now I will see here that as I zoom in here, that there is a, a difference between the tonal value of what was, ex what was selected here and what's in here. And that's because I didn't get the middle of that. So it is important that you get everything that you need to get in that when you remove it. So I'll go over this, be a little bit more delicate along this edge and see what happens. Uh, that is going to look pretty good. It's going to look pretty good because that contrast isn't much different. Now, if I were to make big selections of this, that's where I think that there's a lot of trouble for this remove tool. Let's say I just kind of grab this and I just say, oh, I got the remove tool. I can just do whatever I want with this. I'll just go over this, this whole thing, just like this. And then once I release it, just fill everything in. It's gonna be perfect, right? Well, you're going to notice that there are some limitations to the remove tool. And a big thing about that is that the bigger the area that it is starting to select, the more um, smooth. I feel like it is. It's less detailed. It's more smooth. Look at what happened here. Everything just kind of smoothed out, even though there's all those really nice details in there. So instead I would recommend going through and doing each thing that needs to be done one thing at a time. I know it's going to take more time to do it, but you know, that's the thing. Love takes time. And so does editing photographs. So um, I use that analogy all the time with my wife and kids. So let me go ahead and boom, 
that looks good. Um, if I'm seeing some color differentiation here, I can just hit that. That's a spot that I think needs to have that fixed um, right here. That looks good. Uh, let me zoom over here to this side. And in some cases, I might use a whole just click and drag around with my mouse. And in other cases, I might need to get more intricate with my actual pen tool and go around and draw with my pen to my tablet to make sure that I get the exact spot that I want filled in and not just this big spot. Because if you do big spots, I'm telling you, you're not going to get the results that you desire. Another thing with the remove tool is that you can, if you do it once and you don't like what it gave you, do it again and see if it gives you something better the second time and do it again and see if it gives you something better the third time. And do it again, see if it gives you something better the fourth time. Every time you click over that thing, it's going to recalculate what it's doing. So you're not always gonna get the same result. So if you do it once, like I mean, the remove tool did a horrible job. Just try it again. I'm sure it'll do a much better job the second time or third time you end up going to use it. So now let's go around and look at these areas here. Uh, it looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to go through and do every one of these things because that would take forever, but let's go up to our before. This is our before. I'm telling you, I probably would have thrown an image like this away before because this would have been too much work with something you use like content aware or doing some of my other ninja tips and tricks to clean up images. But after using the remove tool, it gets me off to a very good start. I might have some more things up here that I might want to clean up and fix up in order to, to really truly save this image. But for the most part, the remove tool just this few simple clicks did a wonderful job but you also need to understand the remove tool before you just start clicking around it seems like a simple tool but there's a lot more complexities to it thank you for taking the time to watch this i do sincerely appreciate it if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing i like to take difficult things in photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today